الحمد لله الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا محمد الصادق الوعد الأمين اللهم لا علم لنا إلا ما علمتنا إنك أنت العليم الحكيم اللهم علمنا ما ينفعنا وانفعنا بما علمتنا وزدنا علما وأرنا الحق حقا ورزقنا اتباعه وأرنا الباطل باطلا ورزقنا اجتنابه ودخلنا برحمتك في عبادك الصالحين وأخرجنا من ظلمات الجهل والوهم إلى أنوار المعرفة والعلم ومن وحول الشهوات إلى جنات الخلبات أما بعد السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته and welcome to our next episode of understanding and knowing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that can increase our commitment and worship to Him. Today we'll be looking at the meaning and implication of the word Rabb. And the Rabb is a very important word in the Qur'an that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has mentioned this in, in the Qur'an more than 900 times. And the reason why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has mentioned it so many times in the Qur'an is because he wants us to understand its meaning and implication. And by knowing its meaning and implication, it would enhance our commitment to him and it would enhance our worship to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So this is very important for us to understand. In fact, the very first ayah in the Qur'an, after Bismillahir Rahmanir Raheem, is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about the Rabb. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. We all understand that. We have memorized it. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. That praise is due to Allah, the Master and Lord of all the worlds. Rabbul Alameen. Rabbul Samawati wal Art. Wa ma baynahuma. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the Rabb. So the very first ayah in Surah Al-Fatiha, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala described himself as the Rabb, following his majestic name Allah. Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the Rabb. When one talks about the word Rabb, we need to understand at least five different aspects that are all linked with the word Rabb itself. These are all the different shades of meaning of the word Rabb. On the slide here you can see that I have at least five different Aspects of the word Arrab. Ma'ana Arrab. It means Al Malik. When one talks about the Rabb, it means Al Malik. That you would find that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by saying, Rabbul Alameen, He is the master of all the worlds. And what does that include, being the master of all the worlds? That means that He's the master of everything, He is the master of human beings. He is the master of all plants. He is the master of all living things. He is the master of all things that are inanimate. He is the master of all the angels. The master of all the jinns. And why is he the master? Because he created them. Khaliqul Alameen. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the creator of all of them. And he is the master because he owns them. He possesses them. He is the possessor of all of these things. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala not only created them, but he is the possessor of them. Al-Malik, he is the owner. وَلِلَّهِ مَا فِي السَّمَاوَاتِ وَمَا فِي الْأَرْضِ And to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala belongs everything in the heavens and the earth. But not only that he owns it, but he has got exclusive authority over all of these things. Al-Malik, which is the second aspect of Ar-Rabb. Al-Malik. Our Sayyid. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala not only has created these things and has left them alone. He has provided the guidance, the nourishment, 
the skills of nurturing them and ensuring that they are well taken care of in terms of their growth, in terms of their development, in terms of them being as they should. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is al-murabbi. Al-murabbi is implicit in the word al rabb because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala takes care of all of this. And likewise, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is al qayyim Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one who sustains everything. That he has created everything and he sustains them. He, he maintains everything to the way they're supposed to be maintained. That you will find that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, not only that he has created us, but he has nurtured us. He has nourished us. Despite the fact that he is the owner and he has got authority over us. And then he is provided with, with tremendous favors. Al-mun, al-mun'im. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one who gives plenty favors. Al-mun'im. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, by saying the word Rabbul Alameen, Ar-Rabb, all of these different shades of meanings are implicit in the word Rabb. So when Allah subhanahu wa says, Rabbul Alameen, it means that he is the possessor of everything. It means that he's got authority of everything. It means that he nourishes everything. It means that he's the sustainer of everything. It means that he gives everything plenty of favors. Rabbul Alameen. And that is why you will find that the very first word, very first verse in Surah Al-Fatiha, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about himself being the Rabb and he is the master of everything in all the universe that you may think of. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one that deserves to be praised. He is the one to be praised. All praise is due to Allah, the master of all the worlds. So implicit in that that I've explained is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is al-khaliq. He is the creator of all of these things. And every other thing besides that becomes al-khalq. It becomes part of his creation. Or al-makhluq, the things that have been created. Implicit in that is the amr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when he had created everything, and in order to sustain and maintain them, he has established a system. And that system is his command, and that system is his order, and that system is what and how he wants his creation to function. He says in the Quran, Is it not befitting that it is exclusively, exclusively for him? That the creation is for him and the amr is for him. That every instruction, every order, every command, is exclusively from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He is the one who gives command. He is the one that gives order. And he is the one that produces al-khalq, his creation. So that is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says here, al-khalq wal-amr. So these are some of the aspects of what I've just explained in a different form that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is al-khalq, Every other thing becomes al-khalq wal makhluk And we talk about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala being the malik, that he has got authority and he executes his amr, al-amr. And the tadbir is the other aspect that I've explained. So these, these are some of the, the aspects that for us to understand that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the Rabb. And whenever the word Rabb is used, this is what it implies. In fact, the very first ayah that was revealed to the Prophet وسلم, is Iqra. Iqra, bismi rabbika alladhi khalaq. That Allah subhanahu wa says, read. Read in the name of your master, the name of your Rabb. Iqra, bismi rabbika alladhi khalaq. In this very first ayah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is teaching the Prophet وسلم, first of all, is to command him to read, to understand, to seek knowledge, to develop, develop his intellectual level. Bismi Rabbika. And then he informs him about the name of his master. Rabb, Rabbika. Rabbuhu. His master. Rabbuhu. His Rabb. Iqra. 
بسم ربك الذي خلق and his rob what does he do الذي خلق he creates اقرأ بسم ربك الذي خلق the breed in the name of your master who creates so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala introduces himself as being the rob the very first ayah that was revealed to the prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam الذي خلق خلق الانسان من علق that he created man from that with clings. Iqra wa rabbuk al-ikram and read and your master is the most honorable. Alladhi allama bil qalam that he teaches by the pen. Allama al-insana ma lam ya'lam that he teaches man that he knew not. Also in Surah Al-Baqarah, the very first instruction of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives us in the Quran to humankind, ya ayyuhal nas, اعبدوا ربكم الذي خلقكم والذين من قبلكم لعلكم تتقون. The very first instruction of Allah subhanahu wa taala gives to human being. He says, يا أيها الناس, O mankind, اعبدوا worship ربكم your master. Worship your master. Allah subhanahu wa taala didn't say اعبد الله or اعبد الخالق or اعبد البصير. What Allah subhanahu wa taala says. That worship your master, the one who created you, and even those before you, that you may become righteous. This is how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala introduces himself and he introduces his attributes in the Quran. The very first surah in the Quran. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about Rabbul Alameen. The very first ayah that was revealed to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Iqra bism rabbika ladhi khalaq. The very first command that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given to humankind, He says, A'ubudu Allah, A'ubudu Rabbukum. That worship your master. A'ubudu Rabbukum. And in fact, the very last surah that was revealed to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about Rabb again. إِذَا جَاءَ نَصْمُ اللَّهِ وَالْفَتْحِ فَرَأَيْتَ النَّاسِ دَخُلُونَ فِي دِنِ اللَّهِ أَفْوَاجَةً فَسَبِّحْ بِحَمْدِ رَبِّكَ وَاسْتَغْفِرْ إِنَّهُ كَانَ تَوَّابًا That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala even concludes the very last surah revealed to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam by extolling the greatness and praise of his master. Everyone talks about creation. We can understand the creation from two perspectives. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when he wants to create something, he says, Kun fayakun. He says, be and it is. And that's the way Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created things. But there is another way that when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created something, he would say, Kun fayakun, but he created something by establishing a system in place. And from that system, it is the natural system, we can have people coming forth. We can have human beings coming into the world. We can have animals coming into the world. We can have trees and plants coming into the world. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created these things from something that's already been created. Now Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created Adam alayhi salam from turab, from soil. So the soil was already created and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then created Adam alayhi salam. And likewise created Eve alayhi salam. So it's creation from creation. The very first creation that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created was the arsh of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then water. Then qalam. Then lawhum mahfuz. And then ask the pen to write everything that is established. Fi lawhum mahfuz. And then nar. And then nur. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, all he needs to say, Kun fayakun, he said, be and it is. He created angels from light, and then jinns from fire, and then afterward human beings, because all these things were set on the stage before human beings were created, because all of these things were created for the benefits of human beings. Heavens, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, created from smoke, from gas. Science will tell you from gas, but smoke and gas, they're all similar because gas is part of smoke itself. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created the heavens from Dukhan, as he says in, in Surah Al-Fusilat. 
and then he directed himself to the heaven. Why it was smoke and said to it and to the earth. And both the heaven and the earth, they said they are willing to respond to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, meaning that they have given up their free will, they have given up their own volition, that they are going to be ever obedient to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That is why you would see like that of the earth, that of the moon, that of the sun, or the heaven, they all follow a natural system because that natural system is established by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because they've chosen to be like that. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in terms of life, He has created every living thing from water. As He says in the Quran, أَوَلَمْ يَرَ الَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا أَنَّ السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضَ كَانَتَ رَتْقًا Have they disbelieved? Did they not see that the heavens and the earth, they were all together? كَانَتَ رَتْقًا Very close together, very, very much knitted together, like that of a mother and a baby. كَانَتَ رَتْقًا فَفَتَقْنَاهُمَا And then we have separated them, and we have caused them to be separated. فَفَتَقْنَاهُمَا وَجَعَلْنَا مِنَ الْمَاءِ and we have made from water every living thing. Will it not then believe? Will I not pump upon these scientific evidences and understand that every living thing came out of water? Is this not a well established fact that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is talking about, which is mentioned in the Quran over 1400 years ago, that every living thing came from water? water. In fact, it is amazing for us to understand that, that everything that is created is created for a reason. Sometimes you look at a different creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You may look at snakes, you may look at mosquitoes, you may look at spiders, and you may think that these things, they don't have a purpose. In fact, every aspect of Allah's creation has got, an, got a, a reason, has got a good rationale behind it. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, and everything we have created with a specific decree, that everything we have created with a purpose, we have got a very specific measure for everything that has been created. That everything has got the decree of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Do we know the reason? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one who knows all the reasons. We may know some of the reasons, but that may not be enough to convince us. But accepting Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and understanding Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has got this incredible power of creating as he is the Rabb and being the creator is a part and parcel, an intrinsic part of Rabb in itself. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala creates whatever he wishes. Can we create like Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Can we create human beings like that? Can we create jinns from fire? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying that he has created jinns from fire. It says that he has created angel from light. Can we create angels from light? Can we create other species as we claim about having control over human beings in these days? Do we really have control over them? To think that, okay, we can cause them to die and we think that we can revive them and we can give them back life. Can we create a human being? Can we create a plant? Can we create a mosquito? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, الَّذِي خَلَقَ الْمَوْتَ وَالْحِيَةَ And this is the test in life. That when we understand Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and we know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created death and life, the purpose of that is understanding Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, understanding the intricacies of life, understand the natural process, understand the system Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has established. It's all a test from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's why He has created human beings. That He is the one who created death and life. To test you as to which of you is best indeed. And He is exalted in might and forgiveness. That is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. 
So man, therefore, should really be thankful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's the rationale that people should have. To be thankful, recognizing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and to be thankful to Him. To exhibit patience. Has any of the creation been pointless or without any form of rationale? Can any other force create another world? Or to create another sun? Or to create another moon? Or to create another sky? No, they can't. Can they create the angels? Can they create another arsh? Or to create another kursi? Which they haven't even seen. Because this has only been informed, or we have only been informed of this because it's part of the unseen. But can they really create that? Of course not. The challenge would put anyone to shame and disgrace if they try to imitate the skills of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or the incredible power and might of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Man deceives himself by making false claims to ownership as to what has already been created and established, but he can't initiate his own creation. Of course, we claim you can make things, you can make a table, you can create a table, you can create a house, you can build a house, but to use the existing properties that have already been created by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, of course we can do that. But to initiate a creation, of course we can't. It's not within our ability to do that. Even our own creation is not within our ability to do that. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about that, that how we have been created. That he has created us we were in the form of mutfa, and then he came in the form of alaqa, a spawn drop, and then in something clinging clot, alaqa. And we made that clot into a chewed up lump of flesh. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made that lump of flesh into bones. And then he actually covered the bones with flesh. Then we develop him into another creation. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, blessed is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the best of all, of all creators, the best of creators. So anyone who thinks they've got a skill to do that, let them imitate what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has done. Of course, no one can do that. This is important for us. And that is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us a tremendous challenge in the Qur'an, which may appear to be very insignificant, but it, it is a tremendous challenge from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He says, Ya ayyuhin nas, when you talk about creation, Ya ayyuhin nas, O mankind, Duriba mathalan fastimi'ula, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is presenting to you, so listen to it very carefully. He's presenting a parable. He's presenting an example. So listen to it carefully. That indeed those who invoke and call upon for help besides Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will not be or can never be able to create as much as a fly. He's not asking you to create a cow or an elephant or a tiger or something that is huge or like human beings. He goes to something that is very tiny. <laughs> Besides all these things that they're claiming, they invoke, you know, spirits and jinns or malaika or other aspects of creation. They think that these are all divinity of God. They call upon other power besides Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to ask them. Ask them to do this. Ask them to create a fly. That indeed those who call from beside Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that they would not be able to create a fly even all of them were to gather together to bring all the effort together they would not be able to do that and if the fly snatches away something from them or steals from them a tiny thing, they could not even recover that from them. The weak are the pursuer and those are being pursued. 
But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying that indeed they are weak. What kind of fallacy is this? That they're calling upon something that cannot help. And that is referring to people who call upon the, the creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to help them. Or call upon things that are inanimate, that can't help them. Even a fly takes away anything from them. Even they can't help themselves to protect their own selves from a fly that steals anything from them. How can they therefore be able to create life or to create something that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the likeness of what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created? This is very important for us to understand because creation is a very fundamental aspect in the aqeedah of a Muslim. The creation is about understanding that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the creator. And if we can understand that, then it saves us a lot of fallacies and false ideas that may be around. It is important for us to understand that because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is alone in creating. In fact, everything belongs to him, as we talked about before. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he is the only one that creates and nobody else creates. And that is part of administering his affairs. One of the ways that he does that is through tadbir, disposition. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he ensures that his creation gets all the benefits that they need to survive. And he nurtures them. He nourishes them. These are all what I've explained in terms of Rabb. Al-Rabb, Al-Malik, Al-Murabbi, Al-Qayyim, Al-Malik, or Al-Sayyid, al munim These are all intrinsic and fundamental aspects of Rabb and the meaning of Rabb. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us some understanding as to the meaning of the word Rabb, understanding it in its true perspective. As I've explained that the word Rabb entails the word even Khalik, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala creates everything. You see the word began by creation. The cause is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Some people may say, no, it didn't. It didn't happen like that. Some people may say it began by chance. Some people might say it began suddenly. Some people may suggest it's evolution. Some people may think all the theory that contradicts the aspect of creation. From the moment we reject the aspect of creation, we are rejecting Allah. We are rejecting the Rabb. We are rejecting Rabbul Alameen. Because uh, Fakhruddin Razi alayhi, he says, Rabbul Alameen literally means Khaliqul Alameen, that he is the creator of all the words. So any kind of fabricated evidence that contradicts the creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala violates the very fundamental aspect of aqeedah and tawheed, and it's not true. Then what is the evolution process for angels? If people say that evolution actually what initiated life from the very inception, then what is the evolution process for angels? How did they evolve? What's the evolution process for jinns? By chance, if you were to say that things come, come around by chance, it indicates chaos and it's not a unique system. Why do we all look differently? Is it just by chance? Why are we all different? By chance, you know, at least two people could have been looking the same way. In the midst of trillions of people that have been created from the inception of the universe until the end. But no. It's all designed by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Our fingerprints are all designed by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Why don't we all have different fingerprints? Of course we do. But why can't we just all have the same fingerprints? But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given each person a unique distinction from the other. How did the first life start? If we think that evolution is true, how can a living come from the dead? It's not possible. It is even scientifically untrue. How can something come out of nothing? How can we agree that, okay, it's all about macroevolution? How true could that be? Look at the world today. Everything has got a maker. 
from the very inception, could we not understand that the sky has got a maker and the sun has got a maker and the moon has got a maker and we have got a maker and we have got a creator and the sun has got a creator and the moon has got a creator. Of course, that is Rabbul Alameen. It refers to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But a fundamental aspect in understanding the Rabb is that to believe that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala exists is the basis of life. Belief in Islam is with evidences, proofs, facts, and even logical information. It could either be historical, scientific, linguistic, mathematical, or even linguistic understanding. Why do we have unique DNA, if it is by chance? Of course, it's all a unique creation by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that's what makes it important for us to understand that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is Rabbul Alameen. He creates us. He nourishes us. He owns everything. He sustains us. He maintains us. He provides for us. And he gives us all the necessary ingredients that we need in order to survive in this world. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make it easy for us and for us to understand the implication, the meaning of the word Rabb and Rabbul Alameen and also for us to use that understanding to increase our commitment to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and to increase in our daily worship.